Are you a scrum master and you find it hard to explain what it is that you do all day? Or are you looking to perhaps become a scrum master and you're trying to tell stories about how the work you've done in your past can relate to this unique role? If either of these cases is you, you'll want to find out how to tell your scrum master story coming up in the coffee house. Welcome back to the Coffee House. My name is Vic Bonacci and I am your barista today. So today I'm going to share with you the presentation I gave at the last Global Scrum Gathering, the one that was in Denver in June of 2022. This is a follow-up to a previous video I did, so I'll put links in as we get to them. So first of all, the topic of my workshop, which was about an hour and 15 minutes, was called Telling Your Scrum Master Story. It was great because I started the session by telling a story when I was a scrum master. In fact, it was my first job as a, in Agile at all. I was a scrum master and an Agile coach over a decade ago for a startup in Colorado. So fittingly, I started with a story. I began by setting the mood, telling them I was brand new as a scrum master, probably in a very similar case that many of the attendees were in back a decade ago here in Colorado. <laughs> so, so that was nice to kick things off. But the whole concept of storytelling though, isn't necessarily familiar to so many of us in our day-to-day -day jobs, whether you're a scrum master, maybe an agile coach or some other role. It doesn't really necessarily matter what your role is. The idea of telling a story, letting people know what you've done and, and how you and your team have faced odds and succeeded I mean, who isn't drawn into a story like that? And storytelling is part of our DNA. As human beings, as soon as we hear those words, once upon a time, our ears pick up and we're like, oh, what's going on? Do I need to pay attention? It sounds like there could be a story right around the corner. So the idea of telling your story could come in handy. We know that when you're serving a team, it's often hard to take credit for the team's accomplishments, but there is a way. And that's what I wanted to do with this workshop. First, I want to set the stage. Like my own journey to where I am now doesn't really look traditional and it probably doesn't look anything like yours. For example, when I went to document all the different types of jobs I've had, I've had quite a few. Now, many of them don't ever make a resume. Things like delivering newspapers, painting houses. These are jobs that I had in high school or maybe the early part of my college career, which didn't really amount to much and probably won't make a resume because there's not many valuable stories at that time. But as I progressed through college and then my early adult uh, working career, I started having more and more jobs that were maybe a bit more applicable. So for example, you'll see that I worked in a restaurant. I was a restaurateur. In fact, it was a worker-owned restaurant. We had to organize ourselves. We had to be self-managing. They asked me one day, I recall, if I wouldn't mind facilitating the all members meeting. 30 of us, late at night, crammed into one of the rooms of the restaurant after all the patrons had left. And here it was, I facilitated, we stayed out of the weeds, I got to uh, lead the group into meeting the objectives for the evening, it was a success. And I take that story as well as some stories from some of these other positions as a webmaster, a programmer, a product manager, a project manager, etc. And I try to mine out where are the valuable nuggets, where are the stories that I could tell about how I helped some team achieve some specific success. So similarly, you've probably got a winding career to get you where you are at now, whether you're a scrum master or maybe hoping to become one. And there's a wealth in your experiences that I'm going to help you understand and, and make visible. Let's start off with this concept, and this is the first section of my presentation, was this idea of mining for stories. So for example, back about 10, 12 years ago, I came across two articles the Example Checklist for Scrum Master by Michael James, as well as 42 Tasks for a Scrum Master's Job by Bern Schiffer. I like these articles because they are guidelines. They don't say that you have to do all of these things. However, they were very helpful for me as a young Scrum Master as I was gaining my footing. Links on all these will be in the, in the description below as well. So you can look for job descriptions or other uh, examples of activities that you might have done and you might want to start making note of some of those especially if you really particularly enjoyed it 
or perhaps you, you saw that you delivered some value from it, you want to make note of those as well. Now there's another activity that I would like to share with you now, and excuse me as I grab the book. I first saw it anyway in Lisa Adkins' Coaching Agile Teams. Now I know that she didn't come up with this activity of journey lines, however I like to use it, and I've, I've used it a few times. You'll see here on the screen that my own career journey may have started somewhere in the 90s. So by visualizing kind of this journey map, the highs and lows, the ups and downs of your career path, you could identify maybe some of the key topics that you'd like to pull stories from. This is the point in the workshop where I had people work together. So when we debriefed, I asked them, you know, not only what did you learn about yourself, but how did it feel sharing? Because ultimately, when you're going to tell a story, you have to share it with somebody. So the more that you can practice, the easier it will eventually become. Classes. I took off my apron to remind you that I also teach. I'm a certified scrum trainer. Now I don't spend a lot of time during these videos promoting my classes. However, there's two that are specifically catered to the scrum master. First is the certified scrum master class. The CSM is an introduction to agile scrum and the role of the scrum master. It doesn't hurt that CSM is also the most widely recognized agile certification. My other class is the ACSM, the Advanced Certified Scrum Master, which for me is a two-day facilitation workshop. We explore a wide range of scenarios that are common to many Scrum Masters, and I share tools and techniques that will help Scrum Masters lead through the change, many of the same tools and techniques that you've already seen through my Coffeehouse videos. So if you'd like to see the full list of my public classes or to find out how to schedule a session for your own group, visit Rocket9 Solutions, Leading Agile, or visit my own website, agilecoffee.com. And now, back to the coffee house. So moving on from there, we've moved into the second part of the workshop where we talked all about how to frame the narrative. The first part of framing the narrative for me came in the form of deciding who I'm talking to. Am I trying to get a job as a scrum master? So maybe I'm talking to a recruiter or a hiring manager. Perhaps I already am a scrum master. Maybe I'm trying to get a promotion into uh, the PMO or a management role or some, something else. Well, who is my identified audience in this case? If you are looking at finding a job, talking to someone in a company, I'd like to divide those into two categories. On the one hand, you'll have companies that are very large and perhaps traditional. Oftentimes there's a lot of bureaucracy in these companies, and so to help them make decisions when it comes to hiring, they might employ an AI, some kind of an automated intelligence or, or filtering system that's scanning hundreds or thousands of resumes and looking for particular keywords. So if that's the case, you want to make sure that you're using those words if you're trying to talk to that audience. On the other hand, perhaps you're finding a smaller, more nimble company, perhaps a startup. They look at more hands-on evaluation of a resume. And they're not necessarily looking for keywords, but rather they're open to hearing your stories. If you know which type of company you're applying to for a job, you can cater that resume that it makes the most impact. The next part of framing the narrative was all about the language that you use. So watch your language, Ralphie. <laughs> I mentioned here just briefly a little bit about active versus passive voice. Things that say throughput was increased by 75% or Scrum was taught to all engineers, very passive. Rather, you want to have that active voice. We increased throughput by 75% or I taught Scrum to 15 teams, whatever it might be, it puts you in the driver's seat. So make sure to keep your voice active. Another thing you want to look out for when we're talking about language is the choice of words themselves. Powerful words, active words, as opposed to words to avoid, which might be things like business lingo, company specific jargon, um, and just general phrases of self-promotion or things that should be given like, I'm a hard worker. I think outside of the box. Well, those are table stakes. <laughs> we expect you to be a hard worker. You don't necessarily have to say that. How do you demonstrate being a hard worker? That's what's important. 
So when you're considering words, you might also, and here's a good tip for you, if you know which job you're applying for, go to that job description and see what language they're using. Try to pull the words out from the job description that match the activities that you've done or the value that you bring. So after another quick writing activity where they wrote down some of their favorite words off of these lists, what we did next was I shared a couple of examples. A friend of mine named Lakshmi, thank you Lakshmi, had shared a number of examples that she saw from multiple resumes that she's been reading. She says that she looks for what behaviors have they shifted on a team. For example, instead of saying that they facilitated meetings or they led a refinement or a retrospective session, she was looking for language that said something along the lines of, I improved stand-ups and help the team better align on the work they're doing. That's pretty clear. And if I'm coming across a resume that says something like this, or I'm listening to somebody tell a story in these words, it's compelling to me. I want to know more. I want to meet with that person if I'm just reading a resume or, or if I'm talking to them. I want to dig in and say, well, tell me how you did that. And how are you going to do that for me as well? So now we were in the final phase of the workshop. This is putting everything to the test. To do this, I used an activity called Troika Consulting. Now, if you're familiar with liberating structures, then you've probably heard of Troika Consulting as well. In the workshop, I had people form triads. One person in the triad would tell their story for about three minutes or so. And they didn't have to go very deep into a story. I was putting them on the spot in the workshop but it gave them an opportunity to pick something off their journey line, some of the language, some of their audience that they'd already thought about, and form it together and, and put it out there and see how it goes. But because you had three people, you had to repeat that process then so that everyone had a chance to tell their story and receive feedback. So that was it. It was a great time being there at the Scrum Gathering, and I, I hope to get out to more of these events soon. <laughs> it really was good to see people in person once again. Nonetheless, we still have our coffee house, so I'd like to remind you that if you've got something to share, if you've got a story, we want to hear it. Put it in the comments below and let us know what's your story of Scrum Master successes. <laughs> in addition, please feel free to like and subscribe to this video. If you got any value out of it, look at the comments below and participate in the discussion. So until next time, I'm Vic Bonacci, your barista, encouraging you to enjoy your coffee with friends. <laughs>